My sister is demanding that I let her adopt my child. I think she's plotting to kidnap her. I, 28F, am currently 19 weeks pregnant. My partner, 29M, and I are very excited as this is our first baby and we have been trying for months. We announced the pregnancy a month ago at a dinner party we hosted and everyone seemed surprised and overjoyed. My sister, 35F, who I will call K, immediately burst into tears and asked me how I could do this to her. I stared at her and asked, what? She started ranting saying that I always got everything I wanted, which is not true. I worked hard for all that I have and that she knew I got pregnant just so I could rub her infertility in her her face. She screamed at me for five minutes about how I didn't deserve to be a mother and she should be the one pregnant right now. My parents left with her soon after and the party was basically over. I was really disturbed by my sister's reaction because we had been pretty close before and she had never done anything like this. Kay called me the next day, apologizing for how she acted at my announcement and asked if we could meet up for coffee. I accepted. We met up and she pretended as nothing happened. Then she started a big speech about her infertility, how heartbreaking it is to be growing life inside of her just to lose it, and how she had always wanted children of her own. Then she proceeded to ask me if I could consider getting an abortion to make things fair or letting her adopt my baby. I stared at her and asked if she was serious. Kay said she was. I just dropped my part of the bill on the table and left. Kay's husband, we will call him L, texted me a rant that night about how I had made Kay cry and how all they wanted was to be parents and that this meant so much to them and I owed them for being more successful than them. I and my partner invested many years into our jobs and we have worked very hard to earn what we earn now. I told them that my partner and I had been hoping for kids too and that I was not going to give up my baby. Then he hung up. She later sent me a long four page letter about how she had always wanted to be a mother and I could consider either abortion or letting her adopt my baby. How I should care about my older sister's happiness, how she would make a better mom, how the oldest kid should have the first grandchild, and how I could always just have another baby since it was so easy for me to conceive. After that, she quieted down for some time and I thought we were done with this, except it wasn't. She posted my sonogram on her Facebook and captioned it, Elle and I are expecting. We can't wait to meet our little princess. I was seeing red. I texted her and demanded she takes the post down. No reply. I texted Elle. No reply. So I called my mother and told her what happened. She was able to make Kay take the post down, luckily enough. Kay has called me petty for calling my mom and has continued to demand I give up my baby. I sent her a letter explaining that I had enough of her nonsense. I am keeping my baby and that I recommend she get some help. I added that if she continues, I will not hesitate to call 999. This weekend, however, was the absolute last straw. My mom and dad have the spare key to my house, and while she was over over at their house for brunch, she took the key. While my partner and I were at work, she broke into our house and stole all the clothing, blankets, nappies, bottles, and pretty much any other item we had bought for the baby, except furniture. It was later returned after my mom found it in her car. I called 999, but they told me I couldn't do anything because I had no proof and because it was all returned. My partner and I are moving in April, but I'm still scared my sister will find out where we live and take my child. I get that she's upset and jealous due to her infertility, but that shouldn't mean I have to give up my baby. My parents know about this, and they have been doing their best to get her some help. She doesn't want to adopt because she wants a child that's her own flesh and blood. I'm due in August, and the stress she's causing cannot and will not be good for me or the baby. My partner is looking into a cease and desist letter. Is there anything else I should do or say? I'm scared for my baby. Update. The support I've received from this website is overwhelming. Thank you all for your comments. Although I couldn't reply to all of them, they are appreciated. We have had the locks changed, cameras installed, and a ring doorbell. I've started saving every letter and screenshotting every message my sister has sent and plan to take them to court for a restraining order very soon. We have also been seriously documenting everything. My husband and I are planning a trip to Ireland for our anniversary next week, and it's going to be good to clear our heads from my sister. I've called 999 to report her for harassment, and they gave her a warning. She's contacted me saying that if I won't give her my child, I can at least pay for multiple rounds of IVF, which I have not replied to other than refusing. She's been begging my parents to convince me to give up my baby, which they refuse to do. They have also been given a statement that basically says that if they give her my contact information, they will not see my baby, to which they have agreed. I've since changed my phone number and we are moving very soon. My sister does not know our new address. 
She actually stood on our stoop for 20 minutes a few days ago, banging on our door yelling. My husband opened a window and told her that if she didn't leave, he would let the dog out and threatened to call the police. We have a rather small but hyper puppy who jumps on everyone and barks a lot, and she is quite scared of dogs, actually, so this made her leave. I started working from home late last week, as did my husband, and we followed the advice of one of the comments, washed all of the baby stuff, as well as made sure none of the food in our kitchen was messed with. None was, luckily. We are planning on getting a restraining order as soon as possible and are looking forward to our trip. I am already sick of being pregnant and I'm not even in the third trimester. I just want my baby. Thank you all again for your wonderful advice and I may update you again when the baby is born. We've gotten a few of these stories before where OP gets pregnant and then her sister or sister-in-law or somebody close to her, a friend, gets jealous and says, how could you do this to me? Excuse me, I'm pregnant, not you. I'm sorry about what you got going on, but I'm not doing it to rub it in your face. I'm sorry that you got big insecurities. I'm sorry that you haven't gone to therapy, but this is my belly, so I'm going to do what I want. I know in the story, OP alluded to telling her sister that she needs help. If I were in her position, I, like I always say, I'm big on the therapy thing. I would have been like, hey, sis, uh, you're annoying the hell out of me right now, but I'm a really push for you to go talk to a shrink or a psychiatrist or somebody because you got something going on because this isn't healthy behavior. Maybe OP did and it wasn't mentioned in the story or maybe the parents are trying to push for that. I don't know, but she needs it. We all know she clearly needs it. And uh, thank goodness that OP is moving and changing the address and telling the parents be like, hey, do not give her our address because she's going to steal the baby. She's going to come in in bed at nine months and then pull the baby out of me and then run away with it like a football. Okay, that lady is crazy. Anyway, next story. Story number two. My husband doesn't know that I know what he's up to. My 33F husband, 34M, and I had our first baby back in June of last year. My husband's aunt gifted our son a lovely chunky knitted blanket. The blanket is so soft and I have made multiple comments about how I would like to find a full-size blanket just like it because it is so cozy and I'm kind of jealous of my baby. Well, this past weekend, my husband snuck off to the store. He refused to tell me where he was going and why, but I later found a plastic bag with the logo of a local crafting store. That evening, DH stated that he would like to have an hour of alone time every night after our son goes to sleep. He stressed that he would not like to be disturbed, but if I needed him, that I could call or text him. I agreed to this because we are both adjusting to having very little me time since the birth of our son. Last night during his alone time, our son started crying. I checked the baby monitor and saw that he had simply lost his pacifier and was going back to sleep. However, the baby monitor also shows part of our son's room, not just his crib. In the corner of this room, I saw my husband sitting on the floor with a bunch of chunky yarn in front of him. I turned the volume up and heard that he was watching a YouTube video on how to finger knit. This sweet man is making me a blanket. He absolutely loves surprising me but is terrible at keeping secrets. I just know that he is going to slip up and occasionally mention something about the blanket at some point. I plan on acting clueless so that I will still be surprised when he gives it to me. I just love him so much and I'm so delighted that he's learning a new skill so I can have a custom blanket. Now, here are some relevant comments. One user said, OMG, the title makes this sound like it could have been something else, but it's so cute. Also, why do men always seem to forget about the baby monitor? Then another user replied to that comment and said, because he isn't being deceptive. If anything, he has allowed her to know that he isn't up to anything by being in the view of the baby monitor. He's being very transparent about this surprise gift and I love this for OP. It is something I will steal and do for my partner when we have kids. Then OP replied with, So, he just came home from work and mentioned his alone time again. To keep up the facade, I asked him what he would be doing during that time, and he said, Just working on some stuff. Since he's so terrible at keeping surprises, he always tells me, I have something planned, but I can't tell you what it is. And then we do this back and forth where I ask about it, and he refuses to tell me. So, for the sake of his surprise to me, I will keep occasionally asking him what he's up to during his alone time. Then user 2 commented and said, Thank you for this lovely post and sweet story that is restoring some of my faith in marriage and humanity today. And please, please don't let me come back in several weeks to an update that he used the blanket to pay off a gambling debt, gave it to his best friend's ex for her birthday, or made it into a furry suit for himself. Reddit has been absolutely unhinged these past few months. If he managed to knit a furry suit himself, I wouldn't even be mad. I would be wildly impressed that he had such talent. 
And then finally, user 3 commented and said, What a sweet, lovely partner. Mine can't keep a secret either, and I love giving the validation of surprise and enthusiasm when they present the final piece to me. Just wonderful. If you asked my husband, he'd tell you he's very good at surprising me. But little does he know, he's actually very obvious whenever he's planning something. I'm rarely surprised, but I always act like I am. Update number two. My sweet husband broke. He kept on mentioning that he was working on a surprise for me. I would occasionally ask what this mysterious project was, and he would get a cheeky smile and say, I can't tell you. That eventually involved into him repeatedly telling me that keeping the surprise was really hard, and he just wanted to tell me. I kept saying, no, you've kept it a surprise for this long, so you can keep going. But one day after dinner, he decided he couldn't keep it in anymore. He showed it to me. It was only about one-fourth done, but it was lovely. The yarn was really soft and was my favorite color. I could tell he had taken his time because of the consistency of all the loops. Even unfinished, it was perfect. He told me that he kept moving it around to different hiding spots, but since our house is very small, it was only a matter of time before I accidentally found it. He said he had run out of yarn and asked if I wanted to pick out another color to add it. I said yes, and we made a little date out of it. We grabbed lunch and then walked around the craft store before I picked out a complimentary color to the one he chose. He hasn't had much time to work on it the last few days, but he assured me it will be finished by my birthday. I will post a picture of the blanket when it's finished. For now, I am wildly impressed with how long he kept it a secret, and I'm so excited to have my first ever handmade blanket. And now here are some more relevant comments. User 1 commented and said, OMG, I was ready for another unhappy story, but this is the sweetest thing I've read on this subreddit. What a sweet, sweet man. Then, user 2 commented and said, As a crocheter, if he does not finish before your birthday, whether that is next week or in five months, tell him that's totally normal. It's like a rite of crochet passage that gives are not delivered on or before the intended event. Well, this was a nice story, wasn't it? I have no idea how to crochet, and neither does the husband, but you know what? Love, God, and anime will propel him through this project. And you know what? OP was like, hey, forget the surprise part. I'm getting a freaking awesome blanket. That is good, and I'm happy that it didn't end terribly as it so frequently does. But anyway, next story. Story number three. My, M27, wife, F26, crossed the only line I ever set with her. How can I forgive her? My wife and I have known each other for over 10 years and got married in 2018. We have very different lifestyles. She's a very devout Mormon, and I am not religious. We found some way to make it work. It was a hard road, but there are some challenges still. But we love each other very much. She has never met my biological mother. My parents were divorced long before I met her, and I broke contact with my mom after I turned 18. My mom was extremely abusive towards me growing up. She physically abused me and my sister regularly and tried to frame it on my father. She was able to manipulate a doctor to give me multiple medications growing up and she would steal the meds. Her dirtbag boyfriend also tried to be abusive to me too. I cut my losses and cut all contact with my mother and her family. So did my sister. My parents, dad and stepmom, didn't approve of my wife at first because of her religion, but they get along now. When my wife asked me when she would meet my mom, I told her she never would. She's a violent and terrible woman and she has no place in my life and I don't want her involved in ours. I also told her not to contact anyone in my mom's family. Well, recently my mom showed up at my work, which she had no prior knowledge of. It got ugly and police had to be called to remove her from the property. It was such an embarrassment. When I got home, I told my wife and she just had her oh crap look on her face. I asked what that was about and she confessed she reached out to my mom and told her where I worked because my mom wanted to make amends. My wife's beliefs are that everyone deserves forgiveness and doesn't believe something could be unforgivable. I told her that violated the one thing I told her was out of bounds and didn't even tell me until crap hit the fan. She of course has been apologetic. I told her we'd get there, but I needed to get through it. I've been sleeping in the office at home and we've barely spoken since. We are supposed to travel to her parents for Thanksgiving, but I'm really considering staying at home with the dogs so I can sort myself out. I'm not sure how to get over this. Edit. By the way, she has met my stepmom. My wife is fully aware of what my mom did to us. Now, here are some relevant comments. User 1 said, Do you have or plan to have children? Is she going to use her stubborn beliefs to expose them to abusive people? You really need to think long and hard and don't sweep this under the rug. We don't have any children. She really wants them, and we've only recently started trying to have one. Because of my experience, I'm genuinely afraid of being a dad. 
I wanted to make sure our marriage would last, and I wanted us to be older and enjoy time together first. That's also part of what's eating me at this point. Then, user 2 commented and said, This post was just painful to read. OP, I would stay at home and not travel with her. She totally disregarded your wishes and allowed your abuser to find you. True love means you protect a loved one and not set them up for a desire to be virtuous. It was never her right to do this. Best of luck to you, and may you at least have a restful Thanksgiving. Then, user 3 commented and said, This would be akin to my husband bringing the person who SA'd me when I was a child back into my life. This would be an absolute deal breaker for me. My spouse is my safe space and if they took away that safety, then there was nothing left. I am so sorry. And finally, user 4 commented and said, You have a bigger problem here than just forgiving her. Without substantial change on her part, she is quite likely to do this again, when or if you have children, because children need grandma and any other significant life event that she thinks your mother has a right to know about. It is also possible your wife has some warped idea of being the hero by having you and your mother reconcile. Your wife needs education on childhood traumas and respecting and supporting survivors. As well, you likely need couples counseling to guide the building of trust between the both of you. Do you happen to have a therapist who specializes in adult survivors of childhood abuse? You may want to start with individual therapy for you to help wrap your head around the complex feelings you have from your wife's choices. Update. I appreciate the support of those who messaged me, as well as those curious what happened. I didn't expect this post to blow up. I will give an update in chronological order, but trigger warning. Details about childhood abuse is mentioned. To get this out of the way, mom was served with a restraining order. She can't go in my work property, and I suffered no issues at work because of what happened. Leading up to Thanksgiving, my wife and I sat down to talk. I said I wasn't going to go to her parents for the holiday, and I think it would be best if we had some time apart. She was upset and scared because she has bad anxiety when she travels far alone, so her sister agreed to travel with her. But in this conversation, I asked to see the messages between her and my mom. My mom had bothered her for months with messages on Facebook asking how I was doing, if I was alive, and saying she doesn't get to hear from her son, etc. That part is what got my wife to reply with an update on everything. She mentioned what I did at my work and named the place which there's only one location in our city. I knew she had been reached out to, as me, my sister, and her husband all had, but I didn't know she was constantly harassing my wife like that. And in the time between my mom showing up and this conversation, my mom sent several messages accusing my wife of setting her up and keeping her son from her and those very pleasant messages. She went to her parents' place. I made burgers and hung out with the dogs on Thanksgiving. I went over to my dad's that Friday while everyone out there was out doing Black Friday Friday things. We hung up the Christmas lights and I told him what had happened. Oddly, my dad didn't have much to say. He asked what I was going to do. I asked him for a specific file he had and I told him I'd show her the file. Wife comes home after almost a week and the day after I sit her down and we have a conversation and I pull out the file. She clearly didn't intend what happened, but she asked if I was divorcing her. I said no, but she needed to have told me what happened and or have blocked her. If she had insisted on messaging my mom, I should have been involved to make a more generic message. At this point, I opened up the file, put it in front of her, and she went completely pale. In the file, there were pictures of me the night my mom gave up custody. What happened was we got into a fight over my grades in junior high. My mom started hitting me repeatedly to the point where her nails had started to cut my face. At this point, I was big enough to stop her. I caught her wrist and I twisted it just enough to where she stopped and ran out of the house. The police were called because my mom said I broke her wrist. I didn't. My dad picked me up, took the photos of my bruised and cut face, and my mom released custody to him. A few of these cuts left scars that are still visible on my cheek and sideburn area. After explaining what she was seeing and she looked through what was in there, I told her she needed to understand she opened the door for my mom to have done this to me again. To my mom potentially doing that to her. And if we had any kids, they'd be at risk for the same abuse. Because my mom hasn't changed. Her messages were the master manipulator going after my innocent wife. She said she didn't know it was that bad and she didn't mean for that to have happened. I said we needed to go to therapy as a non-negotiable and she agreed. I caught some heat from her parents for showing her the file. Her parents had me promise them I'd protect her and not ruin her innocent view of the world. Which I suppose is the way to word it. She had a very slow grasp of real world things that weren't very present in the church upbringing. Although they actually agreed she shouldn't have responded to my mom, 
which was surprising. I did do some solo therapy before we did our couples therapy. She was a little upset because I was distant during the holidays, like I wasn't there. Apparently, I had some kind of repressed or undiagnosed PTSD, and I began disassociating again after that happened, and that was why I didn't seem like I was present. I feel like we are making progress. The therapist said my wife had this subconscious desire to fix things and make her perfect family because of some issues her parents had and some issues on both sides of her family. So that was likely why she responded without checking with me. We have stopped trying for a baby for now, which she is devastated about presently because one of my stepsisters announced that she's pregnant and it really kind of hurt her because she really wants to be a mom. We are spending time together again and sleeping in the same bed. She's tried really hard to make it up to me and she's been trying to read more about abuse and understanding those things, which is hard for her. We tried to get things back to normal throughout Christmas and New Year's. Presently, we are doing our therapy every two weeks, and I see my therapist the weeks in between. Thinking back, showing her the file with those pictures may have been a step too far. Our therapist said it was probably a lot for her to take in. But I said it in our session, and I said it in the night of. She needed to completely understand what door she opened and what repercussions could have come from what she did and what could happen to our theoretical children if she wants to open that door again. I'm not sure if there was any alternative to showing her that file, but I think she understands what I really went through. Now, my wife will sometimes rub the scar lines on my face and just give me this strange look. She never questioned those scars before, and she just looks at them like that sometimes. And that's where we're at. I think things are salvageable, as the way things came out before, it seemed like she sought out my mom. But I think she just got played and just attempted to give my mom some peace of mind, but unintentionally made a problem that she didn't understand. Thank you again for those who reached out and offered support before. Now here are some more relevant comments. User 1 commented and said, Does anyone think this is kind of effed up? It's this exact innocent view of the world that led her to be taken advantage of. What if the mother got the idea to have OP's wife get them to meet face to face for a reunion? There's a difference between one's innocent view of the world being shattered by abuse and knowing enough about the world to not be naive and fall into traps like this. OP is stronger than I would be in this situation. I wish him and his wife the best. I understood where they were coming from. This was a promise from when we got married, and in a way, they felt me showing her graphic abuse was against that promise. Especially since abuse, RA, and other things in that nature are really quieted and not talked about much in her religion. My dad and stepmom were first responders. She had a hard time grasping the horrible things my parents would see. My line of work, I also see the worst in people, and she has a hard time grasping that people can be so awful. Not to be too far, but this spread to her at home. She didn't know sex was for anything but child making, and she can have fun, and it's okay to like something. It was a very broad statement, I knew what it applied to, but I think this could paint the picture of what they meant. I'm very grounded in reality, and she still sort of sees the world as sunshine, rainbows, and butterflies. Which isn't a bad thing, she sees the good in everyone. Just this was a moment she crossed the line and lacked good judgment. And then finally, user 2 commented and said, So, has she agreed to go no contact with mom and never pulling that again? Yes, my mom is blocked and she knows not to talk to her. Plus, she became the target after things didn't work out. So she now knows that she needs to immediately block her, and she's verbally said it to me and in therapy. Story number four. Now I have won my husband back, I am leaving him. I have secured an apartment for my baby and me, and I have put everything in order and prepared for custody, shared or otherwise. I have divided the money and transferred my share to a third account, and it will stay there until the divorce proceedings and the division of the assets. I found out that my husband was having an affair while I was postpartum. I thought that I would die because I love him, and it felt like my heart was broken into a million pieces. I knew that it was over, but my curiosity got the best of me. I wanted to know why. What was it that she had that I didn't? Did he love her? I started reading his text, and everything was there. He felt like he was alive again. He was happy and excited. She is single and childless, so she had all the time in the world to make him her priority. He felt seen and desired by her. I was confused because even with life coming between us, he was always my love, and I made sure he knew that every day. Still, it wasn't enough. I read thousands upon thousands of messages between them, and I started being everything he fantasized about. In the beginning, it felt weird, and he was confused, but I just went on. 
Every time he made plans with her, I found a way to make him stay, or I made sure that I sent him exhausted to her. The messages became less and less frequent, and the passion and excitement subsided. Soon, answering her became more of a chore. The complaining started, and him pulling away. He was happier at home, and he couldn't wait to come home. He started texting me again during the day. The sweetest text messages of how he missed me. His old self was back. One day, what I hoped and waited patiently for happened. He ended things with her. He told her that he loved me and that now everything was great again. Her services weren't needed, in other words. I felt relief and finally I could move on. <clears throat> now, I am preparing for my divorce. He will get the papers the day I leave for my new life in my new apartment. I know I will get a lot of hate for this because I have neglected my husband and pushed him to seek solace in another woman's arms when I apparently couldn't give him what he sought all along. And believe me, I will bear the guilt of this for the rest of my life. In my defense, I didn't do it intentionally. Our lives had just been altered drastically and I was trying to navigate this new and exciting existence. I was immersed in this new kind of happiness that I thought I was sharing with him, and I was trying to get to know my new body that I couldn't recognize anymore. A real scary feeling, but he could have come to me with his hurt. He could have talked to me about his suffering. He could have tried to make me understand, but he chose not to. He decided to deceive me. To deceive us. He ruined our love, our future, and even our history. Nothing was, is, or will be the same ever again. Now here are some relevant comments. User 1 commented and said, I would have immediately raged at him and noped the F out for not only cheating, but cheating while I just had his baby. But I always applaud petty revenge. You didn't neglect him. He got you pregnant and then started banging someone else. You're not neglecting someone if you're unable to do the same things as you could before you had a baby. You were being a mother and instead of being a father, he was getting his rocks off. I wish you the best and I hope you have screenshots of all the evidence of the affair so he can't act like it came out of nowhere to others. I just felt ashamed that I lost my love and I guess it made sense that I wanted to win him back. I guess I see what you mean though. Then user 2 commented and said, In the end, after all of this, I hope you are truly happy. I am. I'm sad about the fact that he wasn't the one I would spend the rest of my life with, like we dreamed, but on a general level, I am happy. I am blessed with the most amazing little boy and I am still young and beautiful. I have so much love in my life and great, many supportive people. Romantic love will come. And then finally, user 3 commented and said, Just a heads up, moving money around prior to a divorce makes it seem like you're attempting to hide it and may bite you in the butt during the asset division, especially if he does a discovery period. I am not hiding the money. It's still in my name, which means it is still a part of the estate. I don't want him making a withdrawal and making the money disappear. He can't access my account. Update. He always loved April Fool's Day. I feel a lot of guilt and guilt-related pain. I know what I am doing is so cruel, but I guess I will just keep going with my plans. There's no turning back now. Whenever I feel like crap that I am the bad guy, I just remember their conversations. No, I am not the villain here. I will end the marriage, and I will tell him that it is because we aren't compatible anymore. Let him think whatever. I have decided maybe I shouldn't tell him that I know about her. Let him run back to her once he realizes that I am really gone. When my baby is older, we could tell him that we got an amicable divorce. No hurt or hard feelings, two people who fell out of love. My boy doesn't need to know his daddy broke up the family. It is okay, you can hate me. Now here are some relevant comments. One user said, why are you feeling guilty, OP? He's the one who cheated and is reaping what he sowed. Because I am bitterly plotting behind the scenes and won't give him a chance to explain or apologize. Then user 2 commented and said, I apologize for going off into another lane here, but what in the absolute hell are these hundreds of thousands of women doing engaging in affairs with married men? What is there to gain at all? Who is raising these girls? Is this the Twilight Zone? I'm honestly needing some answers here. Well, I can only speak from the messages I have read. She is in love. He just happened to be married. I am an obstacle, a nuisance, so I guess it is love. And finally, user 3 commented and said, He was fine plotting behind the scenes to hook up with another woman. No need to hear empty apologies for something he wanted and didn't regret doing. That's exactly it. 
I don't want to hear apologies and excuses. So I'm curious, if you guys were in OP's situation, would you pull out the screenshots and be like, bam, I know what you did? Or do you just want to avoid the confrontation and be like, look, I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear your reasoning. I'm done. I'm moving on. Bye bye. What would you do? I'm curious. Me? I, I don't know. I would bring it to their face and then walk away. Or I don't know. I just want them to know that I know. Like, I, I, I have to let them know. Because you ain't going to cheat on me with my hot bod and great personality. Uh-uh. You're not getting the last word. But good for OP. She realizes that she needs to leave this person. She's going to leave this person. She's starting a new life. Maybe she'll go to therapy and address some things that's going on. I'm sure she probably has some emotional trauma or whiplash from this. How can you not? But uh, I feel like in the long run, things are probably going to work out for her. But we are at the end of the video, and you have won a free cruise. No, you haven't. I lied. I apologize for that. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and have a good day. Bye-bye.